Hello everyone, my name is Griffin, and this is my first attempt at a hardcore squat lock of Pokemon Wilting Y. This game is a ROM hack of Pokemon Y that makes things more challenging. We are playing on Insanity Mode as well to further increase the difficulty. The full rule set for this challenge will be in the description down below, but let me attempt to summarize for you. I can only catch the first encounter in any given area or route. If a Pokemon faints, it is considered dead and must be boxed for the rest of the run. No items in battle will be allowed except for held items, and I cannot overlevel the gym leader's ace. In addition to these hardcore Nuzlocke rules, I have my own unique set of squat lock rules that goes as follows. For every death, I must do 10 squats in that Pokemon's honor. For every whiteout, I must do an additional 20 squats, 20 push-ups, and 20 sit-ups. This will push me to my limits, and I urge you all to try and squat along at home if you're brave enough. The documentation for this game will also be in the description box down below, but without further ado, let's get into the first run. We start this run off by naming ourselves Baldwin, and watch in horror as a fletchling flies into our room and attempts to shank our defenseless sleeping body. We then make our way out front, where we wander into a black abyss with presumably two demons there to greet us. They drag Baldwin to a roundtable meeting with our other demon friends before giving us the nickname L'Il B and letting us choose our first starter Pokemon of the series. This being my first go through these games and having little prior knowledge, I pick Fennekin, assuming it would help clean through Viola, the bug type first gym leader, much easier. We name our Fennekin Shed and we easily wipe the floor with Sean and her little grass rat. We buy some Pokeballs and our run officially begins. Something we found out with this hack is that every single run begins with a static 100% catch Speed Boost Torchic holding a Blazikenite. This Pokemon, practically given to us right off the bat, is a huge game changer. It gives us a major upper hand against Viola, who has half of her team hit super effectively by fire type moves. We name our little Torchic Crotchy, and she's rocking a neutral nature. This is also a good time to mention that our Fennekin has a new ability in this hack, Magic Guard, which negates any damage done outside of direct attack damage. Next, we quickly make our way into the forest and catch our third Pokemon, Petalil, who, in this run, we name Lil Tepi. Petalil, luckily for us, is one of the many Pokemon who got a revamp in this game. She is now a Grass Fairy type and offers a bit more support than she would have before. We burn our way through all of the bug and grass type Sandaloon forest throws at us and left nothing but carnage in our wake as we arrive at Route 3. This opens up our fourth teammate to us, who happens to be a less than exciting Bidoof. We name our fuzzy beaver Morbius because, I mean, it's Morbin time, and this is where we make our first critical error of the run. We walk into a trainer battle with this girl. This girl right here, schoolgirl. Bridget. She leads with a Bidoof of her own, but unfortunately for us, this is no normal Bidoof. This Bidoof was raised in the flames of hell and knows nothing but death. It was raised by Satan, and in true Wilting Y fashion, it decides to make an example out of me. You can see the panic creep onto my face as soon as I realize what was happening. This Bidoof, with a combination of Protect, Endure, Rollout, and the ability Moody, showed me what it's like to grow up in the eternal forge of the underworld. One by one, my Pokemon were obliterated, bones crushed, petals withered, feathers plucked, and fur shorn. First to fall was Morbius, but unfortunately for us, our fate was already decided. We begged for pity as Lil Tepi was sent in, but to no avail. By now, Bidoof was an unstoppable force, and we were but a movable object. Miss after miss, stat boost after stat boost, all we could do was sit back and watch as the life force was slowly drained from our team. Lil Tepi was next to fall, soon after joined by Crotchy, and then our starter, Ched. Run one was over, and it was eye-opening. Always expect the unexpected, and don't underestimate any opponent. Quickly, before we start run two, I wanted to let you know that this series is an ongoing thing. Many evenings around 8.30pm, we will be going live on Twitch to keep trying to beat this game. 
I'll be trying to post weekly highlight videos as well, just like this one, so please consider liking if you enjoy this, and subscribe so you don't miss a run. I'm debating in my head whether I should do post commentary, like this video, or if I should stick to just stream highlights. We'll figure it out, but let me know what you prefer in the comments. I'd really appreciate it. And let's get into run two. All right, time for our next attempt. We decide to pick Fennekin again, and this time we name him Nifeen. This is also a major turning point for the series, as our chat decides to give us two encounters on Route 2. The Static Torchic, who again we name Karachi because if it isn't broke, don't fix it. And this time along, we also manage to snag a Weedle. Kinda yikes, but chat decides to name him La Weed, which is a fitting enough name. We take our orange team into the forest, and this time around, we get a lucky 5% Pikachu encounter. Having this electric coverage will be huge for Viola's team, as she has a lot of Electro Web Mons, along with Surskit lead and a Vivalon Ace. We name our new girl Chapuki, and we're already feeling better this run than we were last. While incinerating the forest, we game plan for the gym battle and figure out that a water or rock type Pokemon would help us out greatly for this gym. Bonds lie on Route 2 is our only rock option, so that's off the table. But we can still get a Psyduck from Route 22, which would be a nice add. On Route 3 this time around, we managed to get an Intimidate Shanks, which is another huge mod. The ability to lower her Pokemon's attack is a game changer. Schnicks the Shanks sneaks onto the team. This time around, we avoid Bidoof, the Harbinger of Death, and we make our way into the first gym, Santaloon City. There's not much to see or do here, so we make our way up to Route 22 to get our final encounter before the... Wait, is this a trainer battle? With a level 10? Shit. Um, okay, okay, this is fine. We send in Schnicks the Shanks, and it shanks her Zigzagoon down. This is absolutely perfect. Now we just have to take care of this Torchic. We switch into Nifeen, who, while resisting its embers, we realize can't really do anything back against him. We decide to switch between Mons and let everyone get dangerously low in the process before finally taking down the Torchic. Great. Now she has one last Mon, a speed-boosting Venipede, who we luckily have Crotchy, who's healthy enough to take out. Crisis averted. Now we make our way up to Route 22 and get our final encounter, a Spearow. Seriously, this thing might be one of my least favorite Pokemon ever. I'm not kidding. I hate how ugly and boring it is. I need somebody, someone out there, to tell Game Freak to stop putting this godforsaken creature in games simply just because it's a Gen 1 Pokemon. Please, I'm, I'm actually begging you guys. Give us more Starly. Give us give us more Talo. I don't care. I'll even take Picky Peck. Just get Spiro out of my damn face. We name him Reepso, and we add him to the team because it's at least decent coverage for Violas, or good fodder, whichever comes first. At this point, I began looking for rare candy codes so I don't have to worry about spending so much time grinding, and I think I got one. Wait. What? Hello? Um. Uh. You know what, who needs run two anyways? Let's just forget that one ever happened.